we're going to take a look at another way to set up a rappel. In this case, we're at a multi-pitch rappel station, and I'm the first person arriving at the rappel, and I want to get myself attached. So provided I'm using a third hand and I have knots in the end of the rope, it may be safe for me to release this brake strand, or I may want to tie a BHK, basically an overhand underneath while I do this. I feel pretty good about this, and I can also just leave my hand on the brake strand. I'm going to take out my anchor. I've been using this pre-constructed quad, and I'm just going to clip this in to my anchor. This anchor, you'll notice there's going to be another piece attached. That's going to be my uh, camera person who's also attached to the same anchor. A lot of times I'll attach this directly to the bolt. In this case, in order to keep this free from my camera person, I'm going to attach it into the chain. Chains look really good. And the only part of the anchor I want to make sure I don't attach to is this last chain ring here because that's where I'm going to thread. And I also want to make sure that I'm on the outside, not underneath, like this, where once I put my rope in, the weight of the rope and uh, the way people being attached to that rope can pin this anchor in place. So I'm going on the outside here, like so. And now that that's on there, I'm going to attach myself in. I'm not using the equalized method back here because I find it's much easier to take myself off here. There's a little bit of slack. And I also don't tend to do the going through two loops here because I find it pinches this carabiner. So that's my personal preference. And then I'll clip that in. In this case, I might want to be a little bit closer. So it's not a bad idea. Clip that in nice and short for myself so I can work a little bit easier. And I can go into either of these two sections of this quad, either the outside two or the inside two. And then I leave the other two for my next person to come down. So I'll take the under inside two. And that way the next person who's coming down can quickly and easily attach him or herself to these outside two. And I'll just continue repelling until I load that up. Okay, so now I'm on the anchor. So now I can take my third hand off. And there's a couple things that could happen here. Um, if I was doing a pre-rigged rappel, which I'll talk about in a separate video, it's an advanced level video, then I'd probably keep that third hand on and I would immediately go into a fireman's belay. If I'm not doing a pre-rigged rappel, my partner is also using a friction hitch backup, then I can start to disassemble this and start to thread the anchor for the next rappel. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate here. Open this up. Open that up. Okay. Get that out over here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up to make sure there's no crosses in the row. It looks like they're running pretty parallel to each other. And so that's good. Now I'm going to pull up one end, the end that I'm ultimately going to thread through the anchor. And I'm going to take the knot out of the end of this, provided my partner either has not gone on repel or is nowhere near. Because if I take this knot out and they slip and fall and go all the way through, past me, then taking this knot out could, uh, could be a danger to them. So an alternative to that is to place a BHK below the anchor with enough space that they can repel to about here and then attach themselves in. Okay, so here's a nice big BHK. You can either leave that hanging, which would be a soft closure, or if I had a spare locking carabiner, my cameraman's got a lot of my lockers right now. You could also take that and then clip that up to the chains or to the shelf on my anchor here. But that's a pretty good closure. It's a soft closure now. Okay, and now if I take this knot out, I'm not opening up the system. Okay, so my partner might be rappelling down toward that BHK I put in right now. Pass this through like so, and now I reclose the system by putting my barrel knot in, making sure I have enough tail, and that barrel knot is tight, and it's not gonna come out, okay? Now I will start to stack this rope on my tie-in, like so, until I have just enough slack left over for my partner to repel. Now once my partner reaches, this BHK and the knot, they can clip themselves in right here with their tether, similar to the way I did, and then we can start working together. Take this BHK out, and my partner 
can start pulling down on this strand of the rope right here. Okay, watching for the other knot that we tied into the end of the, the rope as it starts to come up. Okay, so my partner can do this at the same time as I start to pull down on this side and continue to stack across my tie-in. Yeah. So this is my partner's job here. And then he or she will find the knot, take the knot out that we used to close the system when we threw the rope down initially. I like to run my hand over that spot one or two times because when you create those bends for doing that barrel knot in the end, sometimes those bends can stay twisted up and can jam. Okay, so I've taken those out. So my partner will continue to pull down. And I'll simply continue to stack this equally on my tie-in. That way I'm organizing the rope for a throw. While my partner continues to pull down, he or she is looking now for the middle of the rope to make sure we don't pass by the middle. And once I'm getting close to the middle, if my job is pulling the rope down, I want to make sure that everyone is out of the way for this rope so it's not going to come down and whip anyone because that can really hurt a lot and get nasty bruises from that. The other thing I want to make sure is that if this rope comes down with a lot of force and energy and it's really steep here, you can start pulling the rope through the anchor. So you either want to clip this in, tie a BHK, or have someone whose job it is to keep hands on. Okay, so I'm going to keep pulling this until we're right at the middle mark, and I'm going to tie a BHK here. So there's my middle goes through. Okay, so now I've got hands on, and I'm going to tie a BHK. Okay, right here. If I'm doing a pre-rig rappel, then I like to put this BHK right about knee level. Okay, so it'll be right in this area here. That gives plenty of room to get multiple devices on here. Knee level is good for three climbers. If you're climbing as a party of three, I find kind of like mid-thigh level is good if you're climbing as a party of two. Now I pull until this comes through. So I've got to tell my cameraman as well. Sorry, Zim, but this uh, end of the rope is going to come down right now. Okay. Rope. Okay. And the other thing you want to keep in mind is if you cannot see that the rope has clearly hit the ground and is on the ground, then you want to pull the end of that rope up and close the system to get on. Right? If you're not using a free rig repel method. Again, the free rig repel method is covered in a different video, more advanced. With a pre-rig repel, the knot in one end of the rope is sufficient. Okay. So now I've got my knot in. So the system has been completely closed, closed on this side as well. I'm going to get a little bit of counterweight out here, take in some hand coils. And it's probably going to get stuck a little bit in these cracks that are below us. Sometimes that's inevitable. But having a little bit of counterweight can help to get it out in a little bit of way. So fold that in half once or twice. I'm going to aim it way out over toward our shoes there. See how that goes. Looks like it works pretty well even with the wind. And I can see it's clearly on the ground. So I'm going to do slightly similar with this bundle. I can either toss all this down or I can feed it out part by part. You can see there's a little bit of twist in there, so I want to make sure there's no twists. Looks good, so it's going to feed off well from the back here. Okay, got my closure right here. So I'm going to throw this so it goes down as a loop, and then I'm going to bundle this up and as a counterweight. So here's my loop, okay, and then I'm going to bundle this up. My counterweight here. So, do a couple folds. Okay, and throw this just like a baseball straight towards our gear. Okay, and I can see that's on the ground. 
So now I'm ready to load my belay plate. I'm gonna put my friction hitch on first. I'll put it below my backup knot here this time. Makes it a little easier to take out this knot if your friction hitch is below it. Okay. That in there, use that to hold the rope. Put my device in. Okay, I've got that still all set up as my backup. And now I'm gonna make sure that the system is holding my weight here. And I'll take this backup knot out while I'm still clipped in. And that way I can test the system, make sure it's gonna hold properly. Okay, looks okay. like that's holding. Okay, I am on the system. I might need one more wrap in that to give me the amount of friction that I like. There we go. Okay, looks good. So now I'm clear to take this off, clip that into my belay loop, and I take my quad anchor, and then down I go. Okay. 